So this is tax and uh, the natural resource costs. It's part of the Extractives for Development project at the UNU wider, but it's also bridging another research project. It's also relating very closely to another research project on fiscal states in developing economies where I have been involved and hence I'm here chairing the session. So to set the scenery here, give you a little bit of background on the session is uh, what are we trying to do here? What was our thinking behind this? Essentially, the broader question we were trying to ask is, uh, is there a developmental resource curse? Do resource-rich economies can uh, use natural resources for uh, to support other development out outcomes other than growth, education, poverty reduction, inequality reduction, health? That's the broader question we were trying to ask. We heard a lot on uh, the resource curse as a, a harmful effect for economic growth. But uh, we haven't heard a lot instead. We haven't heard so much about other developmental effects that uh, being resource rich may have. Uh, this is important for the academic debate, because we don't want to just know if uh, natural resources are good for growth. We want to know also if they help us with uh, human development in general, to support human development in general. And it's also policy relevant for the SDGs, for example. A lot of uh, resource-rich economies, and uh, I recall the IMF in a policy document a few years ago lists over 50 resource-rich economies around the world. A lot of those are located in sub-Saharan Africa, for example. So it's important also for, uh, for the SDGs. Uh, Kunal and I, when we're writing this, you know, and thinking about whether resource-rich, being resource-rich supports human development, we essentially were trying to argue that uh, the issue here is uh, is a, is a different one. It's understanding why some resource-rich economies do well and others do not. So why did we argue that? And then we'll come to the issue of taxation. We argue that because uh, it's in the data. Oh, uh, probably I was uh, not holding the microphone later. So I was saying we started this uh, by looking at a few data. If you take standard variables of health, education, poverty and inequality, and uh, we collected uh, a few when uh, writing this up, we noticed that uh, essentially, these are the actual data, take education. You notice that there is a weak correlation between education, health, and this, are, this is a standard under five mortality rate, life expectancy, and measures of poverty and income distribution, Gini index, share of income over the poorest 20%, and uh, the share of people living below 50% of the median income. In all three cases, you see a weak correlation. In this case, essentially non-existent, but weak certainly in the case of health and education outcomes. Between these measures and a standard measure of being resource rich, resource rents. This is the standard resource rents variable that tells us how much income in an economy comes from natural resources as a, a share of GDP. And these are long-term averages. So we started from this. Looking at this, what do we see? We see that uh, essentially at least two facts. There is uh, no systematic reason to think that uh, being resource rich doesn't support health, education, poverty reduction. There is no clear relationship there. And the second thing, which I think is probably even more important, if you look at this data that I've just showed again, is that there is a lot of variation. You can have uh, similar levels of resource rents as a share of GDP, and yet very different health, education, poverty reduction outcomes. So Chile has a similar levels of uh, resource rents 
as uh, other economies like uh, in Africa, like Central African Republic, but uh, Chile does much better than uh, a resource-rich economy in Africa. So the question is, uh, how do we explain that? That we have to get to the bottom of uh, this. And part of it, and here we come finally to the session, is taxation. Is it that some resource-rich economies have more effective states where they can tax more, can tax better? This surely will agree with me, may be important, because health, education, poverty reduction, rely on uh, public services and infrastructures that can help you to support all three outcomes. And I've taken less than five minutes. That's about the background to this. Now I'm looking forward to hear from the speakers how they can, uh, how they have tried to answer these questions.